Hi everyone, I'm Xue Yan from UC Davis. Today, I would like to present our work, Diving Deeper into Anti-Aliasing in Confidence. This is a joint work with Fan Yi, Zhi Ding, and Yang Jie. Given an input image, a classification network will predict the probability of each class according to its content. The classifier could correctly classify the cute animal as squirrel, as shown in the image. However, with a tiny shift on the input image, the output prediction will change dramatically. The top one predictions iterate between squirrel and dog. Prior works by Zhang and Shanka have observed this phenomenon in image classification as well as object detection. We observe the shift inconsistent effects also occur in pixel classification tasks, such as instance segmentation. For example, here, the classifier hovers the decision between cat and dog for the right animal. It is very unlikely for human to have different decisions on the same object. However, in convolution neural networks, this observation exists. It could be partially attributed to aliasing when the feature map is downsampled. Now, we use a toy example to illustrate aliasing and its potential solution. Aliasing refers to phenomenon that high frequency signals degenerate into completely different ones after sampling. The standard solution is to apply a low pass filter before downsampling. However, it can be suboptimal to apply the same filter across the entire image. For example, while the noise is blurred adequately, the edge frequency is too blurred to see its boundary. To tackle this in a better way, we need an adaptive content aware low pass filtering layer, which adjusts low pass filters based on image content. For example, in Figure D, we use a soft low pass filter on edges, but a strong low pass filter on the background noise. Thus, not only high frequency signals are filtered out, but also edge information is well preserved. Apart from image, these filtering techniques could also be applied in convolution neural networks to avoid aliasing. For example, given Resin 18, it has downsampling layers before each convolution blob, proposed by Richard Zhang in SML 2019. Low-pass filtering modules is inserted before downsampling layer to avoid aliasing. Note it, practically we don't insert blur module before the first convolution layer to acquire better performance. Now, we already have a broad idea on where the blur modules is inserted in deep neural network. Next, we will introduce how does the blur module exactly operates on features. We compare our adaptive low-pass filter approach with the most related work proposed by Zhang. Given a slice of feature map, its activation magnitude varies across spatial location. For the fixed low-pass filtering layer, the same low-pass filter is applied to every spatial location like this. However, for our adaptive low-pass filtering layer, neural network will predict filter rates based on image content so that low-pass filter varies across spatial location, like this. In summary, as shown in figure A, low-pass filtering layer proposed by Richard Zhang will have unified weights for each spatial location, where our approach in figure B will address the filter weights based on image content. Given a vision map, it is straightforward that the content varies across spatial location. Furthermore, different feature channels can also have different frequencies. For example, certain channel capture edges either capture color blobs. Fixed low-pass filter will still apply the same handcrafted low-pass filter on each channel. But for our adaptive filtering approach, filter weights adjusted on both spatial and channel dimension. At the same spatial location, each channel will be applied different low-pass filters as shown in figure B. However, predicting a low-pass filter for each spatial location and channel is both memory intensive and computationally expensive. And with the observation that some feature channels share similar frequency, we separate the channel into groups. And for each channel group, different low-pass filters are predicted for every spatial location. Now, we have understand how is our approach operates on features. We will then go into details of how it is achieved in neural networks. Given an input feature map, we first separate C channels into G groups. For each group, we predict a set of low-pass filter rates for every spatial location, where K is the kernel size. Then, we apply a softmax layer to constrain the filter weights sum to 1 for the low-pass property. We then apply the pre-trained low-pass filters on each spatial location and channel group. So that for each pixel, it is computed as a weighted sum of the surroundings. 
we finally concatenate all the channel groups back and pass the fissure to the next layer. Here, we visualize the learned filters for each spatial location with group number equals to one. We compute the variance for each kernel. Where a k-by-k -K average filter with, we will have zero variance. And an identity filter with one at the center and zero anywhere else we will have high variance. As shown in this figure, our model correctly learns to blur high frequency content more to prevent aliasing and blur low frequency content less to preserve useful information. For example, the wrapping in the first row is applied to low variance filters on edges, where the graphs with smoother content are better preserved using weights closer to identity filter. Further, we visualize the predicted feature maps in each group. As shown in this figure, features within each group are similar to each other than those in other groups. In this way, filter could be reused without harming performance to reduce computation. In this figure, group 1 and 3 generally has lower frequency information compared to group 2. Apart from image classification, to evaluate consistency on pixel classification tasks, we propose two metrics, mean average instant segmentation consistency and mean average semantic segmentation consistency. In order to measure how much the network is sensitive to input shifts, we compute the prediction similarity on the overlapping region of two shifted inputs. To evaluate the effectiveness of our approach, we test our method on image classification, domain generalization, instant segmentation, and semantic segmentation on both accuracy and consistency metric. For image classification on ImageNet, our method outperforms RESN 101 and LPF baseline on both accuracy and consistency. At the same time, the learned weights are well generalized to other data sets like ImageNet weight. In pixel classification tasks, we use Mascar CNN as our baseline and insert anti-aliasing module on its backbone. We found both LPF and our approach surpass baseline with a large margin, especially on consistency. And this observation generalized well to the task semantic segmentation with DPLAP V3 plus as backbone. Our method surpassed baseline using MIOU metric with two points on Pascal VOC and one point on Cityscape, which is a nice improvement on semantic segmentation tasks. Now, we want to study how each segment of our method contributes to the final performance. First, we investigate the influence of group number on accuracy and consistency. We found top one accuracy does not increase and the consistency drop when the group number is larger than eight. This is why we choose eight as group number in all experiments. Next, we study the filter types. Build and put vanilla ResNet. Gaussian filter apply the same handcrafted filter on every spatial location, where image adaptive filter predicts a signal low pass filter for the entire feature map. Further, spatially adaptive filter is exactly our approach with group number equals to one. And finally, spatial channel group adaptive is our approach. We find when extending from predicting a filter for each feature map to learn a low pass filter for every spatial location, both accuracy and consistency increase a lot. Further, if we have different low pass filters on each channel, performance will further boost. In conclusion, we summarize our contributions on three folds. First, we introduce a new adaptive low pass filtering layer, which could be easily plugged into convolution architecture. Second, we propose two consistency evaluation metrics on pixel classification tasks. Lastly, we, com we compare our approach with strong baselines, including ResNet 101, MaskRCN, and DeepLab with Repulse.